Hi everybody. Well, you can tell by this massive stack of books that I have another book haul, and this one is of Reader's Digest books. So I recently went to this thrift store in Amarillo, Texas. I was on a road trip heading to Texas, and I stopped just to stretch my legs and looked up on um, the maps app to find a, a thrift store, and I was able to find all of these amazing vintage Reader's Digest books. So I thought I would show them to you. So let's pull this stack apart because this is a little ridiculous, and I'll show you what they look like. So I'll show you each of these and so you can see how beautiful they are. If you're not familiar with Reader's Digest condensed books, they are um, vintage books that were produced by Reader's Digest starting, at, I believe, in the 50s. And over the years, they have changed a little bit. Well, quite a bit, actually. Um, but they're just beautiful books, and they're wonderful for junk journaling because they're a great size. They measure typically five and a half by seven and three quarters inches. So they're a great size for junk journaling. And the older ones have um, not only beautiful spines, but they also have really pretty covers. So at this um, thrift store, I was able to pick up a lot of these, two boxes full, in fact, and got a really great price on them. Some of them are very vintage, like from the 50s and first editions, and some of them are, I believe, into the 70s. So I thought I would go through this stack and, and show you what they look like. So this one in particular has a really pretty cover. All of these are a little bit dirty. I need to go through and clean them up. Some of them do have some stains on them, and I'll either you know, see if I can clean them up, or if I can't, I might um, try to grunge them up a little bit more and make them even more vintage looking. And, but this is basically what the inside of them look like. This one, particular one is from 1957, titled Summer Selections. And quite often they have not only beautiful covers, but also really nice artwork. And so I always go through and make sure to look to see, um, isn't that cool, what the artwork is inside and salvage those for ephemera. And of course what I'm going to do, what is typically done for junk journals, is um, you, you gut the books. You gut the interior out and you save whatever photographs or text that you want for ephemera. Uh, and then you use the block of the book for um, additional ephemera. So that's the first one. And this one is from 1968. Um, they used to use sewed binding in these. And then um, sometime in the 50s, they started using glued binding. So depending on what you're going to use the book for, uh, depending on how you want to alter it, there are some dating back into the early 50s that you can find that do have sewn bindings. But here's another one. Really pretty floral cover. Um, always important to look through these because sometimes you'll find uh, some ephemera lurking. A lot of times they'll be in bad shape like for instance this one just it just cracked so but that's okay because quite often you're going to remove that anyway. This one is really pretty kind of a pale green and you can see also the cover on this one on the spine is cracked and damaged and again it's okay because we're going to remove it. But it has some pretty uh, detailed edging here. And of course the cover, always the front and the back. If they have a design, they'll have it on the front and the back. And I think I paid uh, 50 cents to a dollar for these, depending on the book. This one's from 1959. 
Here's another one that has the messed up spine, um, but yet the cover will be beautiful for a junk journal. And it is from 1959. Beautiful yellowed aged paper, which will be wonderful for ephemera. This one is one of the more vintage versions. This is from 1955. Can see here on the cover they used to have the dates of the year on the cover and so the older ones you'll you'll see that and these from the 50s the uh, around 1955 they used a different type of cover but isn't that a beautiful floral cover and this is one yes and so let me see if I can get it close enough for you this is one that has a sewn binding. So if you wanted to alter it to use some of the existing pages and leave the binding in place, uh, this one would be good, good enough to do that. Look at that old vintage picture. Isn't that something? That's that one. This is another one of the vintage, truly vintage 1950s. Another one from 1955. Very, very beautiful cover. This one has some damage where they had a price tag on it at one time. But that's okay. You can certainly deal with that and cover that up. Um, this one's in really good shape. And 1955 again. Beautiful weathered um, aged paper. Very cool artwork that can be used for ephemera. Here is another one of the vintage ones that has the sewn binding. Let me get that closer, you can see. This one says winter, winter 1955 selections. So I've heard that for the winter versions, they would use snowflakes on the cover. And so this is an example of that. And this one's in excellent condition as well. This is an example of a newer one. Uh, you can tell it's just much newer just by looking at it. But also has a beautiful design. So this one, I, it really looks like, I'm always sad when I find a book that looks like it's never been read. This is from 1987. But again, aged paper. And in very good shape. Quite often you'll find them with the dust covers. So this is one that has a dust cover. This is from 1981. Uh, looks like this must have been part of an auction at some point. But here is the cover. Isn't that beautiful? So if you wanted to make an orange themed book, junk journal, altered book, whatever you wanted to do with it. Look at that. So cool. Total. It's about a car accident. So that's that one. Another one with a dust cover. Isn't that isn't this beautiful? Now this one's got a bit of bit of a problem, but again, it doesn't matter because we would be pulling that off as well. And this one looks like yes, this one's from 1958. Here it has the year up here. And um, a beautiful blue cover with a tree. And this one doesn't have quite as many pictures, but still. Um, great, great material for junk journal purposes. This one is another one from 1956. So it looks like in 1950, late 1955 or 1956, they started using glued binding. 
because those that I showed you a while ago with the with the sewn binding were from 1955 and this one is from 56. Look at this, the last hurrah, beloved. Beautiful cover. I always like to save the first pages as well because they will coordinate in color with the cover. Here's a second copy with the snowflakes. Again, the sewn binding. This one's from 1955. And this is winter 1955, so it looks like they did switch in 1956. This one I think is so cool. This one is a newer one, and you can see that it does not have a date on the cover. So let's look to see when it was published. Look at that picture. That's going to make some beautiful ephemera. Looks like this was published in around in the 70s, it looks like. And so you can tell that the pages in this book are not quite as aged. But still, 70s is vintage. And so this one will work as well. And I love this cover. It's so pretty. really like this one as well. Look at that, how cool that is. This one is from 1963. Ooh, that's beautiful. That will make some beautiful ephemera. Oh, that's so pretty. This one has some beautiful aged pages as well. So this one is from 1973. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. And Page is not as aged, not as yellowed, but that's but that's okay. We can still use them. Here's an example of a smaller one. So they had a series called bestsellers, and these had a more of an, a narrow depth. So this is about three quarters of an inch. If you wanted to use this with the spine intact. These would work well. These are a nice size. So, and, and of course, I would save these front pages to use in the junk journal because it matches the cover. But beautiful color pattern. This one's pretty. It would be pretty for a botanical journal since it has flowers in the cover. This one is from 1979. Here's another a thinner one again, one of the best sellers. And this one is purple. This one is from 1981. This one is from 1954. And again, you can see that it has the sewn binding, the sewn signatures. A little bit of marking there I think will come off. Looks like just some dirt on the cover. Beautiful aged paper. Uh, this is another first edition, and oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? I'm going to have so much fun pulling ephemera from these. You know, a lot of people buy these. They will match them up by sets, such as the year or the color, and they'll put them up on their bookshelves. This one I love. This is another one from 1954. Look at the pattern on that. And it has a texture to it. It's really pretty. 1954 selections. Again, in, in excellent shape. Printed in the United States. The Birds of South Africa. Look at 
this picture. So cool. This would just be beautiful on the cover of a journal. Wrapping presents. This one with a cover on it. And this one is so cool. Look at that design on here. This would be a beautiful book for a Zentangle journal. And this one was published in 1966. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful image. So they don't have a lot of images, but when they do, they're just, they're, they're just, sometimes they're so beautiful. Um, a lot of the older ones uh, during wartime, they had stories about war, and um, I typically don't use those, but, but you never know who you might be making a journal for. If they're a war veteran, then certainly they might enjoy seeing um, text from those stories or the images. This is one of the newer ones again. Here's another one with a cover, and uh, similar to the red one. So this would be pretty as a pair for a lap book. Wouldn't that be pretty? I'll have to set those aside for that. <clears throat> and let's see, I have two more. Um, so this is another red one. That would be pretty with the other red one. Again, as a lap book. Ooh, look how cool that is. I would have loved to have worked for Reader's Digest just to pick out the patterns to go on the book. So that is my Reader's Digest book haul. Um, I'm going to have a lot of fun going through these, looking for ephemera, and transforming them um, to, uh, to turn into beautiful junk journals.